All right, today I have a true three-door cooler that is not getting to temperature. All right, so we have a little three-door under-counter cooler here. Temping. So let's check the obvious things first, our visual cues. Okay, you can see here our evaporator coil is frosted up, frozen. Okay, our condenser fan is running, our compressor is running 6.5 amps, our coil is clear. Alright, so let's go ahead and take off this evaporator cover here and let's defrost this ice. We'll just hit fast forward here and just start pulling this whole thing apart. And let's get the ice off of there and then reevaluate from there. All right, so cover's almost off here. All right, so cover's off. You can see we got a little bit of ice here just in the top right hand corner. So let's go ahead, uh, use some water, get this defrosted really quickly. Probably be the quickest way to do this with the water. All right, let's just pull this chunk of ice off. All right, ice is off. As you can see, I made a nice little mess here. So let me just uh, crank out the vacuum here. And let's get all this water out before we start troubleshooting. I hate working in water, so I always clean up water before I start working again. All right, so I'm gonna gauge up now. So I'm getting about eight inches mercury, 75 PSI in the head pressure, and 65 ambient. All right, so our suction pressure is eight inches mercury. Our head pressure was 75 PSI. So let's go ahead and look at our PT chart and see what we should be getting. So suction pressure, it's going to be our desired box temperature, which is 34 Fahrenheit. And we have a 20 TD coil. So we're going to subtract 20 from that, which is going to give us 14, 14 Fahrenheit. Let's go check out our PT chart here. And at 14 Fahrenheit, we got 14.4. Let's call it 14. All right, and for our head pressure, we're gonna go ambient plus 30 Fahrenheit. So we had 66 ambient. Let's add 30 to that, gives us 96 Fahrenheit saturation. So let's go to our PT and see what we got for 96 Fahrenheit. And at 96, we're gonna get 115. So we're looking for 14 PSI and 115 PSI. So let's go plug these into our diagram here. So 14 and 115. And based off of that, it's telling us our suction pressure is low our head pressure is low. Okay, so there's only two reasons why we'll have that on this cap tube system. And it's either low charge or a restriction in the system. So let's go rule out our restriction in the system first and see if that's the issue. And if it's not, uh, let's go hunt for a leak. All right, so our charge here is eight ounces. Okay, that's important to find out if we have a leak or not. So I'm gonna start putting in some refrigerant. This is gonna tell me if we're restricted or if we're low on charge. This step is very important. So let's just hit fast forward here. And as I get close to the pressures that I was looking for, which was around 14 and 115, 
So you can see I went slightly over 15, 124, which is fine, but that tells me there's no restriction in the system. Okay, so I'm gonna unplug the unit now. And what that's gonna do is equalize the system. Okay, and we'll see if we have enough pressure in here to do our leak test. And we're low two and a half ounces. So we got a pretty small leak here. So we equalized around 48 PSI. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a, uh, a quick leak test here. If I can't find it, we'll pump her up with nitrogen. So we'll just start by uh, hitting up the Schraders. And then we're gonna test our whole condensing unit. And we'll just hit fast forward here. Make sure there's no leaks in the condenser. And then where our leaks usually are, are in this vapor coil as we know. We'll go ahead, give this a quick test, hit fast forward here once again. See if we get any hits. It's a pretty long evaporator on this one because we got the three doors. Okay, so far no hits. So I'm gonna take out all the insulation here and see if we have any leaks in this section. Occasionally I will get a leak in that section there. Uh, nothing given there. So I'm just going to confirm with soap on these Schraders that there's no leaks on them. Yeah, we have no bubbles here. So Schraders are good. Let me test the other one on the high side. Same thing, no bubbles there, so we're all good. So I'm going to put in nitrogen now. So you can see our low side can go up to 140 PSI, high side 312. So we're going to use that 140 as what we're going to test, or as close to as 140 as possible. So let's go ahead and throw in some nitrogen. And let's get it up around 130-ish if I can. And let's go do another sweep test, and then hopefully this time we can find the leak. Like I said, it was only down 2.5 ounces, so the leak's pretty small. Um, that's why I like to add in the refrigerant, not only to rule out that restriction in the system but it tells me how big this leak's going to be all right so let's start our leak test here so i always like to start by hitting up all my o-rings they love to leak on these on these gauges and these hoses so i always start with making sure my hoses aren't leaking and then let's go test this whole condensing unit see if we get any hits here so far so good now there's another leak spot here, it likes to leak from this little section here where we 90 up. So I removed that insulation. But once again, no hits here. So let's go hit our evaporate coil and see if we can get anything in here now that we're up to that 130 PSI. And I'm just going to be really thorough here and take my time. See if we get any hits. So far the right hand side's good. Let's go over to this left hand side now. Just quickly sweep the coil. It usually doesn't leak in this section, but it's a small leak, so I just want to be thorough. I need to find this leak. So I'm just gonna take my time here. Let the meter do its thing. Let patience be the key here. Alright, so I'm finally getting some kind of hit down here in this bottom left hand corner. And that's telling me it's in the actual, behind these fin tubes here in the actual coil. Which is not the most common spot, usually I find it's on these U-bends, or right where the U-bends go into the coil through that plate. But let's see if we can pinpoint this leak, it's going to be hard to pinpoint it just with the location of the evaporator coil. So we're getting a hit again right here. So we definitely have a leak here in this bottom left hand corner and I'm getting another hit on this U-bend here. Looks like the back U-bend. 
second from the top. It's picking up something it don't like. So we got two really small leaks. Okay, I can tell they're small leaks because the meter's not staying steady. Like usually when I pick up a leak, it'll keep beeping at me and it won't stop. And see, I'm barely finding this leak here. So it's telling me it might be closer to the back row. And that's why the meter's not staying steady on it. And then this U-bend here though, this second, number two, Right there, something I definitely don't like right there. And you can see here this leaks very faint. Yeah, we're picking it up right there. It's almost like a couple inches off of that edge. We're picking it up. All right, so the last thing I like to always do is let's confirm it with the bubbles. This one I had to see with my mirror. It's going to be really hard to pick this up with the camera. There's like a really small bubble on this U-Bend at the bottom. And I'm going to try to focus the camera as best as possible. But it's kind of right there. Okay, you can see with the mirror it's hard to pick it up with the camera. But there's our leak. Uh, this coil's done. We need a new coil and we'll send a quote for that. Hey everyone, I just want to start off by saying I'm sorry I haven't been posting any videos lately. Um, we kind of got this heat wave and we've been working crazy hours. So the time it takes to edit these videos, I just haven't had the time. I do have probably four or five other videos that I've recorded that need editing, but um, it's just finding the time to do it. So I'm literally editing this one at whatever time it is right now, 536 in the morning. But okay, so just quickly we'll go over that call. So people ask me, why would you add the refrigerant in? Okay. So usually when you get those pressures, it's going to be a low charge, but there is the possibility that we have a restriction. So you don't want to rule. You don't want to go ahead and assume it's a low charge and then spend two hours looking for a leak. You want to rule out the restriction. Okay. So that's why I add the refrigerant. The second reason why I add the refrigerant, it's going to tell me how big the leak is. So two and a half ounces, that's telling me it's a very small leak. Okay, and I'm gonna struggle to find it. Okay, so for my techs, um, you are not allowed to top up units and leave, okay? But definitely that's a no-go, we have to find the leak, okay? You can't top up the two and a half ounces and call it a day and walk away. You have to find that leak, okay? So it's very important that you take your time, find the leak, um, and just be very thorough, okay, with your troubleshooting. So I've actually upgraded that leak detector I found in the last couple weeks it's just not finding the leak. So I've upgraded to the DTEC 3. Uh, you'll see it featured in a lot of my newer videos. And I've used it in the last week and it's been it's been really accurate at finding leaks. So I'm looking forward to making some videos with that new DTEC 3 and uh, sharing those videos with you guys.